Hello, and welcome to Linear Functions and Models. This is part two, The Models. My name is Tuesday J. Johnson. I'm a lecturer at the University of Texas, El Paso, and an assistant professor at Doniana Community College. So this is example five, but check out part one of the video. You'll see the skills. That was examples one through four. But now we're going to throw in some word problems, do the same thing. This is all going to be a bunch of blah, 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 blah. Find the slope, find the y-intercept, write the equation of the line. It's the blah, 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 blah that people let get them down. So let's focus on it. Let's figure it out. Let's get it, get it going. So the Rideham Bicycles Factory can produce 100 bicycles in a day at a total cost of $11,400. And it can produce 140 bicycles in a day at a total cost of $12,200. Now, first of all, I read through that and there's a lot of numbers coming at me. And so I kind of fade out. But I go to the last sentence and or question. What is the marginal cost per bicycle? Translation, uh, find M. And what are the company's daily fixed costs? Uh, that's just B, right? Fixed cost, B. Marginal cost, M. All right. So these are linear. Yeah, we're going to assume these are linear, although it never states it in the problem. Uh, marginal cost, oh, get the right tool here. Marginal cost per bicycle is a slope M. Daily fixed cost of the y-intercept B. So all of this information up here in this very long sentence with a lot of numbers, it's just asking us to find M and B. Let's find a couple of points. All right, so the ride and bicycles factory can produce 100 bicycles in a day at a total cost of 11,400. So an input, 100 bicycles. Output, 11,400. That's going to be my first point. It can also produce 140 bicycles in a day at a total cost of 12,200. That's going to be my second point. So the blah, 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 once I figure out what it is I'm looking for, I'm able to go back, take the information, and set up my points. Because once I have two points, the situation doesn't matter. Once I have two points, I want to find the slope. I'm going to take 12,200 minus 11,400. And I'm going to divide that by subtracting in the same order, 140 minus 100. This looks like 800 over 40, which simplifies to $20. And that's my marginal cost. Using either one of the fixed points in our found slope, we can find the fixed price to be 9,400. But I know you would kind of like to see that happen. So let's make that happen. Let's see if I get my pen working here. So I will use this point because the x value is the important part, right? We have the y equals mx plus b. The x has to be multiplied. I'd much rather multiply by 100 than by 140. So I'm going to take 11,400. My slope, 20. And that's 20 there times 100. My writing's super sloppy, so I'm going to use a capital B so it doesn't look like a 6. 11,400 equals 20 times 100, so I'm going to attach two more zeros on here, plus B. When I subtract 2,000 from both sides, 11,400 minus 2,000. equals B, and that's how I get a very sloppy $9,400 for my fixed price. All right, so uh, it's not a price, actually. It's a cost. Why would I say price? It's obviously a cost. Cost. So it's going to cost $9,400 a day at the Ride and Bicycles factory, uh, but each new bike is only going to cost them $20 to make. And there we go. Right on Bicycles Factory. The following table shows worldwide sales of a certain type of cell phone and their average wholesale prices in 2009 and 2010. Yes, I do need to update my examples. But it's really blah, 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 blah. Here's a numerical representation of some real world data. This is kind of how things come to us. We don't have a continuous model. We just have, we know what the price was, we know what the sales were. We know what the price was, we know what the sales were. So we're going to use the data to obtain a linear demand function, and we're going to use the demand function to predict sales to the nearest million if the price was 156. 
Here we go. Uh, the demand functions have an input of price and an output of quantity. So 163 comma 175 is our first point. 153 comma 214 is going to be our second point. So I'm going to find the slope. I'm going to find the y-intercept. And yes, I'll do this a little bit. Make sure we have all of our skills. So our slope is 214 minus 175 over 153 minus 163 and this is going to be let me see 175 if I give it 25 more I'm at 200 so 25 and 14 that's the negative that's not negative that's the positive 39 153 minus 163 is a negative 10 and that's how I get my slope to be a negative 3.9 we can use the same uh, steps that we used before All right, choose either one of these points choose either one of these two points along with our slope to find our y-intercept now it's very important here this is a linear demand function demand functions always has a, have a variable of P for price if you use WebAssign like we do at uh, both UTEP and DACC, then you want to make sure you put in the P because WebAssign doesn't like it when you mix up variables. It tells you right here, use P as your variable. So make sure you type it in with a P as your variable. Negative 3.9P plus 810.7 million phones. Let's take a look at part two of this, part B. Use your demand equation to predict sales to the nearest million if the price was set of $156. So in my demand equation that we found on the last slide, we put a price of 156 in for P, negative 3.9 times 156 plus 810.7. I'll do my multiplication and get negative 608.4 plus 810.7. When I combine the two of these, I'll end up with 202.3 million and of course, I am capable of reading instructions, so my answer would be 202 million that I would type in. I, uh, I wouldn't put that 0.3 because I need to pay attention to my rounding. So 202 million phones is the demand at the price of $156. All right, example seven. You can sell 60 pet chias per week if they're marked at a dollar each but only 20 each week if they're marked at $2 per chia. Your chia supplier is prepared to sell you 15 chias per week if they're marked at $1 per chia, and 95 each week if they're marked at $2 per chia. Notice I pick up speed because as I'm reading through this, that's a whole bunch of what? I get down to the questions. Write down the associated linear demand and supply functions in the form Q equals MP plus B. All right, so all this nonsense in the paragraph at the top that's setting me up, giving me the information for my demand and supply functions. And of course, once I have supply and demand functions, uh, neither a surplus nor a shortage, I want to find equilibrium. So let's take a look. All right. In my paragraph, you can sell. So people want 60 pet chias per week if they're marked at a dollar each. But remember, demand and supply always prices the input, so prices in the first or the what we think of as the X position. So even though it tells me 60 pet chias at a dollar each, don't just assume that they give you the correct order. You know the price is a dollar, you know the quantity is 60, so you know the point has the form 1, 60. 20 is the quantity at two dollars for the price, so your point is 2, 20. Similarly, in the next sentence, your supplier is prepared to sell you, so your supply is 15 at a dollar each and 95 at two dollars each. So with these two points for demand and these two points for supply, we can find the slope of demand, we can find the y-intercept of demand, we can find the slope of supply and the y-intercept of supply using the same skills that we just did in part one of this video and in the last couple of examples. Now, using demand, 
right? And knowing our form for the equation, Q equals MP plus B, demand is slope 20 minus 60 over 2 minus 1. 20 minus 60 is negative 40, divided by 1 is negative 40. And we could choose either point. I'm going to use this one because it has the easier x. Uh, excuse me, p, right? p is our variable. It has the easier first coordinate. So I can find my y-intercept to be 100. If you need to, pause. Take that piece of paper that I know you have next to you right now because you're a good listener and you're doing these problems as I'm going through them. Find the y-intercept. Make sure I'm right. When I write my equation, it's going to be a negative 40 for my m, p for my variable, and then plus 100, the y-intercept that I found. Similarly, slope, 95 minus 15 over 2 minus 1. 95 minus 15 over 2 minus 1. That's 80 over 1. I can find my y-intercept to be a negative 65. And I can write my equation as q equals 80p minus 65. I'm telling you this is what it is. If you need to hit pause, make sure you can find that I'm right. Now, at what price should the chias be marked so there's neither a surplus nor a shortage? Uh, that's just asking for equilibrium. Equilibrium is when supply equals demand. This really should be in blue, so let me just throw a little blue highlighter over there. Got a little crazy with my, uh, with my colors. Demand equals supply, and I solve. So I'm going to add 40p to both sides. On the left, I have 100. Equal sign, 80p plus 40p is 100 and 20p minus 65. I'm going to add 65 to both sides. 100 plus 65 is 165. On the right, I still have 120p. And to get p by itself to find the price, I'm going to take 165, divide by 120, and I get 1.375. But remember, we're looking at dollars here, dollars and cents, rounded two decimal places. 1.375, while mathematically correct, is not modeling correct. You're not going to tell somebody, hey, give me a dollar point three seven five and I'll get you something. No, it's a dollar thirty eight. Round it appropriately for real life money in real life situations. A little quick uh, linear change over time. We can do our quantity Q being a linear function of time. Our slope is quantity divided by time, so maybe miles per hour, m is speed. The slope m measures the rate of change of q, and b is the quantity at time zero, the initial quantity. If q represents the position of a moving object, the rate of change is also called the velocity. Uh, velocity in absolute values is called speed, but it's essentially the same thing. We don't have a lot of problems on this one, but linear change over time Linear changes, it all comes down to y equals mx plus b. And we'll just call the y and the x different things based on the situations we're modeling. That's it for chapter one. Thanks for listening.